So a very good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on building a future ready classroom. I'm Hiba, behalf of SAR Education. I'm delighted to have all you with us as we explore the latest in education with a true expert in the field. Ms. Greshma Mumaya, an academic education leader and parenting expert with over 15 years of experience is our speaker today. She's a sought after keynote speaker, mentor, and trainer. And she's currently the founding principal of Pratna.in World School in Bangalore. Ms. Greshma's varied background from kindergarten teacher to head of school demonstrates her commitment to innovation and excellence. The best preschool principal in India, a certified Microsoft innovative educator, is here to walk us through key strategies for developing critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and preparing our classroom for future challenge. So before we begin, let's set up some ground rules for today's event. To ensure an uninterrupted session, we will put everyone on mute except our distinguished speaker. The chat box will be activated as the session progresses. I encourage you to participate actively by asking questions and contributing to the discussion. And at the end of the session, a feedback form link will be provided in the chat box. To obtain the session certificate, I kindly request you to complete the survey. Without any more waiting, let me now welcome Ms. Greshma to share her insight and expertise with us. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Iba. Thank you for a quick introduction. I get very awkward when, when I'm introduced like this in the conferences or, or in webinar, but thank you for keeping it short and quick. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm sure either you are at work right now or you have just come back from work at home, maybe having a cup of tea or cup of coffee. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining in today because I know sometimes it can... Thank you, Maninder Kaur. I can see you sipping the coffee. <laughs> yeah, so I know it can get very, very tiring after work to join any webinar and listen to someone for like 90 minutes. It's not easy. So first of all, pack your back and clap for yourself, okay? Because I think you deserve it. <laughs> Either you are a teacher or your principal or whoever who is working in the school is on toes the whole day. So I know everyone is a little tired, okay? So I will try to make it as lively, as energetic as possible um, so that, you know, you don't feel sleepy, Okay, um, so uh, just a couple of things, whatever strategies or activities that I'm going to share are for mixed age group, like for, for under every 21st century skill, you will see some um, activities or strategies are applicable for pre-primary, some for primary, some for middle school. So I've not bifurcated, but I'm sure you will be able to identify them. So you can make a note of note of that. You um and secondly, um, I am going to use Mentimeter. Okay, so a link will be shared with all of you uh, when it's required because we'll be doing a lot of word cloud, voting and all of that so that, you know, all of us are awake, including me. <laughs> yeah, so let's begin. And uh, this, this particular topic is very, very uh, close to my heart because I feel this is the need of the hour. Whatever said and done, how much ever good our curriculum, our pedagogy, our teachers, our environment, our infrastructure is, if we are unable to promote these skills, um, it doesn't make any sense to have the best curriculum. So that's why this uh, particular session is extremely important. I'm sure, you know, uh, when I'm sharing these strategies, some of them you are already implementing it in your classroom. You just maybe are not aware that it promotes this particular 21st century skill. So whenever you feel that, oh, ma'am, I'm doing this strategy in my school or in my classroom, please pack your bag. You deserve it. Okay, so let's begin. So today's agenda is, uh, I'll start with the 21st century framework, then we'll get into the uh, uh, categories of 21st century skill, then we'll understand what is divergent and convergent thinking 
okay because this is also very uh, buzzing new words in the education industry so i want to just clear the air uh, about these uh, words and then we will see under each skill what are the strategies that we can implement okay so first of all let me just quickly share uh, the uh, mentimeter just one second um Menti mentimeter link in the box in the chat box once you click on it what i want you to do is can someone just open yes yes ma'am just give me a moment i'm enabling the no, man sure one second so as soon as you see uh, the link is open what i want you to do is uh, i want you to type a word that comes to your mind first when you listen to 21st century skill okay what is that first word that comes to your mind is what i want to know okay and what i'll do is i will share the screen here so that everyone can see the word cloud okay creative creativity ai communication collaborative lovely potential skillful empowerment global technology innovation connectivity competency hmm confidence lovely lot of words beginning with c i can i can see on the screen okay memory global determination hmm active artificial intelligence lovely hiba i'm not sure if we should continue with the with the uh, webinar or not because they already know most of the words and it's nice to see that most of the words are there um you know on the screen yes ma'am new technology they are 21st they are 21st century teachers teachers yeah right soft skills yes encouragement fantastic good job i'll stop sharing the screen and uh, i think i don't have to looking at this uh, word cloud i understood that i don't have to really explain all of you about what the 21st century skill is but uh, what according to you which one is important and why according to you if you can just type it in the chat box which 21st century skill you feel is important from whatever you saw right now and why do you think that is important okay let me open the chat box i need to know the why also why is so important yes why collaboration why creativity why critical thinking why learn unlearn relearn why and uh, anyone why okay anyone 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 yes everyone is giving me the name i need to know because of cutthroat competition critical thinking in the coming future okay technology integration with all the subjects okay fantastic creativity because this world demands to create critical thinking to understand the condition or the situation technology need of the hour there is so much happening in the world hence whatever they do they are, they have to be confident so true shreya uh, critical thinking as it helps find the solution in different ways fantastic fantastic yes why is important okay so now i hope everyone is able to see the screen now what you see right now is actually the 21st century framework and this framework was developed uh, taking inputs of not just educators or education expert but the business leaders uh, the ceos the corporate co corporate world everyone got together to create this framework because it defines and you know it illustrates the skills the knowledge the expertise and you know whatever is required for a child to thrive in the future and 
very surprisingly, they came up with these nice support systems that you see at the bottom, standard and assessment, curriculum and instruction, professional development and learning environment. So when a school or a country builds on this foundation, which includes knowledge, which includes skills with the necessary support system that is there below the standard assessment, the curriculum, instruction, professional development, learning environment. It is observed that students are more engaged in the whole learning process and they graduate better prepared to thrive in today's digitally and globally interconnected world. So this is the framework that um, everyone has been following. Many schools abroad and in India are following uh, this particular framework. So if you look at the, in the center, it comes the key subjects, the three R's, right? The three R's are nothing but re reading, arithmetic and writing, right? All your subjects, your mathematics, economics, science, geography, comes under the key subjects that is mandatory in all the school in the every curriculum or board that we are following right what are these 21st century themes now this 21st century themes are the interdisciplinary themes that are integrated into your key subjects and what are these themes global awareness financial economic business and entrepreneurial literacy right? Civic literacy, health literacy, and environmental literacy. So that's the key subject in 21st century themes. Now, what you see at the outer circle, yes, the main is learning and innovation skills, which are the four C's that we commonly see in many, many curricula, many, many presentations. Critical thinking, communication, collaboration, creativity. And we see all, we saw all of this in our word cloud also. So then the 21st century skills are divided into three. First one is learning, innovation, and skills, the four Cs. Then comes the life and career skills. Then comes your informational technology skills. Today, what we are going to focus on in this webinar is the learning and innovation skills and the life and the career skills skills yes so these are the major three categories let's look at learning and innovation skills and under that comes your critical thinking creative thinking collaboration communication okay now let's look at what is divergent thinking and convergent thinking now why am i talking taking this topic now because the first segment of our webinar is creative thinking and critical thinking these are two types of thinking now creative thinking is nothing but it is also called as divergent thinking and your critical thinking is also called as convergent thinking Yes. So let me give you an example of this um, uh, divergent thinking and convergent thinking. So uh, imagine a tree with many branches spreading in different directions. Now, divergent thinking is like exploring those branches to come up with lots and lots of ideas. It's when the children's imagination is like wildfire. It's like spreading and they come up with a lot of possibilities and ideas. Nothing but when we do brainstorming, you are actually doing diversion thinking. You are using your imagination. You are using your creative thinking. Okay. So that's divergent thinking for you. So if you have, if I have to give you a classroom example, uh, you give a cardboard to children, to your class children. And let them brainstorm on what can be made from this cardboard. And they will come up with different ideas. They'll say spaceship and dollhouse and race car and robo and house of a doll. A lot of things. What they're doing here is brainstorming. So they're using their creative thinking. In critical thinking, now imagine those branches are all coming together at one point and getting into a funnel. And then they come up with one idea. That is critical thinking. Where 
after brainstorming when you actually take decision and implement one idea that is critical thinking that is convergent thinking and analytical thinking now when you do when you use both of this sometimes what happens even in our team meetings lot of ideas are discussed but no decision is taken then it's only divergent thinking right or in some uh, some meetings there is no divergent thinking we the decision is already taken by your leader or your supervisor or your coordinator so there is actually no divergent thinking everyone is just following that one decision but when you combine brainstorming and you take a decision from after brainstorming what you are actually doing is the lateral thinking you are using both and that is what is called thinking outside the box okay this was important for you to know i think this differentiation most of us didn't know earlier so i think this differentiation was important now let us get how we can promote critical thinking and creative thinking in classroom first one is questioning it's so easy allowing children to question is the best and the most easiest way to promote critical thinking but you will say ma'am they keep asking questions even when i'm teaching okay i can't answer all the question it breaks my flow as well so here i'll give you an idea what you can actually do is you can create a wonder wall or you can create a wonder box and ask children whenever they have a question they just write that question and put it in the box so you can have a setup of a you can have a designated space in your classroom where children can post this questions so that your flow is also not broken like uh, you are not disturbed and you can answer the question after you finished explaining your topic or you know you finished your your uh, role when you are introducing any new topic and then go back to the questions that children have asked okay second is inquiry cycle inquiry cycle by cat more talk and that is one of the important element of sar education curriculum also so what happens is asking question is actually the first step of the uh, inquiry inquiry cycle now here one thing is children asking question and second thing is teacher asking the question in the inquiry circle cycle it starts with teacher asking the right questions then they gather data then the research happens then they do the research then they analyze the data and then the provocation happens okay so this is the entire inquiry cycle that you can implement in your lesson plan instead of just going to the classroom and saying today we are going to learn about agriculture and industries there are different types of industries and whatever whatever just giving out information i think this is cycle that you can implement second problem solving activities right we we, uh, we saw in the crowd uh, in the word cloud that problem solving is also one of the important uh, way of promoting 21st century skill now what we can do is we can give age appropriate challenges to children you can use puzzles you can use riddles you can use brain teasers to promote problem problem solving skills apart from that what you can also do is have a mystery box so you can place an object inside a box and provide children with some clues to guess what is there inside this activity actually encourages deductive reasoning and creative thinking because children are constantly re reasoning out and trying to be creative on what is in the mystery box next is obstacle course design i think uh, creating an obstacle course is also in a way that we are teaching them problem solving they are trying to find a way to cross this obstacles you can also build challenges using lego using construction toys blocks um for problem solving activities now lego can be extended even adults can play with lego and there are n number of challenges that can be created even to engage an adult so i'm sure with lego even primary middle school and high school teachers can create challenges storytelling and uh, imagination so instead of just telling them a story what you can also do is after reading a story 
uh, children draw out their own ending. The climax is decided by children and to imagine kind of what might happen next. So they are actually discussing the creative ideas to end the story. Okay, you can also do provide the beginning of a story like you, for example, uh, once one morning, I woke up and found a magical key under my pillow. And then allow your children to complete the story and you will see so much of creative thinking flowing in your classroom. Right? Okay. Socratic questioning. Can anyone tell me what is Socratic questioning? You can just uh, raise your hand. Socratic questioning. Or you can unmute yourself and tell me. Anyone? Socratic questioning, anyone? Anyone, anyone? Okay. It includes why and how. Thank you so much, Shaista Jain. Jen, it's more of why and how and less of what. Now, whenever we are showing an object, a flashcard or any picture to children, the first thing we ask is, what is the color? What is this? What is that? And we finish. That's what our, even our assessments are like that. What we forget, for example, if there's a picture of lion, instead of asking what is the color of the lion, you can ask them, why do you think the lion has a golden colored mane? Or what might be the lion's role in the story? Yes. Or how is lion similar or different from other animals? How and why? More of how and why and less of what is actually Socratic questioning. Okay. And then... Uh, Last, uh, also we have visualization, okay? And visualization works across the age group. Even for pre-primary, instead of you talking, you can even use sensory cues like sense or sounds to trigger mental images, okay? Even when you get onto any of these apps like Calm and Headspace, if you are selecting a meditation by the river, you will hear the waves sound, okay? And that's how it helps you create a mental image. So you can use that even with your uh, pre-primary children. For elder children, you can have guided imagery, you know, activity. So you can lead the children through a through a guided image, imagery exercise and you can describe a scene related to the topic that you are they are studying. Right, even predictive visualization. So before introducing a new topic, you can have a present a brief scenario related to the topic. Yes. So that is how you can also. Now, next is interdisciplinary approach. This is a very um, uh, term that is widely used when you describe your curriculum or pedagogy. Yeah, interdisciplinary in a, uh, approach in a very common man's term is nothing but a math topic can be taught through different subjects. It can be introduced through art, through music, through dance, right? Through uh, language, through geography. Yes, so where ev every subject gets, gets interconnected is what interdisciplinary approach is. So let me give you some examples of how even SAR curriculum uh, follows interdisciplinary approach. So they have, they teach fractions using mandala. Then they have photosynthesis using, uh, with uh, pointillism, right? Pointillism. Then longitudes and latitudes using line art. Yeah, so these are some of the examples that I thought uh, I'll share it with you for you to understand what I mean by interdisciplinary approach. Next, let's move on to the second or oh, third, actually, 21st century skill that is collaboration. Okay, and here's the question How do you, sorry, there's a typo error, how do you promote collaboration in your classroom? 
as i mentioned in the beginning of the workshop there will be a lot of activities that you would already be doing in your classroom so now i want to know how do you promote uh, collaboration in your classroom yeah uh, you can unmute yourself you can uh, turn on your video and unmute yourself i would love to see humans and not the black boxes yes uh, how do you promote collaboration yeah by giving them a project work paramjit kaur ma'am has said okay by giving them a project work okay riya yes riya mehta has raised hand uh yes ma'am you can unmute yourself ma'am yeah i was able to do it now uh okay. through hands on activities uh, peer learning forming pairs forming groups of threes and fours um assigning tasks and duties for every group yeah okay so group based learning if i have to put it across in yeah. that way okay lovely group task yeah involve them in different activities peer reading teamwork yes let's look at some of them most of them are uh, similar to what i have but i have some different activities also one is of course the group based learning that riya also shared you can have group based learning in um, uh, pairs you can have small group uh, you can also have a large whole class your large group is nothing but your whole class activity but i generally suggest teachers even in my uh, previous organization and in my current organization what we actually do is we ensure that in a week uh whatever subject we are doing we ensure that at least there is one pair activity one a uh, small class small group activity and one uh, whole class activity yeah so it's like a checklist that we have made so maybe a, a pair activity can be in your english a small group can be in your math whole class can be in your science yes but you are actually promoting and it's like a part of your curriculum uh yes paranjit paramjit kaur yes from good evening i just want to say that uh, if we want to take group activities means we want to collaborate then we can give them like when we are teaching living and non living things we can divide our class into groups and we can write down some of the uh, pictures we can draw some of the pictures on the board and ask the kids there are two teams team 1 team 2 and this team 1 has to uh circle the things which are living and other have to circle the things which are non living like this they can collaborate with each other and they can uh, with teamwork they can easily find out this lovely That's thank all. you thank you for sharing uh, your your strategy lovely uh second is kagan cooperative learning structures if you actually google this term you can even take a screenshot of the slide if you want you will get list of cooperative learning uh, activities that you can implement in day to day in your classroom of course think pair and share is also one of the cooperative learning structures that is given by uh, kagan kagan is a name of a person who has made that list yeah then you also have teach okay method uh from uh, whole brain, whole whole brain learning so teach okay is nothing but you give these two three instructions main main points that you want children to remember like some facts about an animal or about an history event and then you say clap and say teach and the children just turn towards their partner okay and one person starts sharing what they have learned and then you say change so what happens is the now the person who is actually listening will start speaking and other person listens to their friend so it's it's similar to think pair and share but there's a movement there's a clap involved in it so it's more uh, you know uh, engaging for children of course project based learning i think that is the best way to uh, have children do uh, doing collaboration but i don't want projects where everything is being sent home then you are not doing collaboration then it's the mama's collaboration that is happening all the moms get together look, look for a person who can make project one person is creating the content no a project based learning where there is an actual problem that the children are facing or that is happening in the world and then they make project on that and everything happens in the school 
they don't make projects at home then you are doing collaboration okay next is classroom norms and agreements so most of the times uh, these uh, issues happen the behavioral issues happen because um, the rules are made by us adults and children have to follow it okay even when we were kids or even when like you know if a if our family is making a strict rule we get that itching and khujli to break the rule and we then we say oh rules are meant to be broken but when in the classroom when the child is breaking the rule we become oh we feel there is so much of behavioral issue so why not create your classroom rules and agreements along with your children i think that would be fantastic activity for collaboration and also it inculcates mutual respect between the teacher and the children and amongst the children also so you can involve your children in creating the rules that they feel we should have it in their classroom okay and it also gives them a sense of ownership okay next is problem solving challenges again little connected to problem project based learning but i have seen so many schools if there is any problem that the children are facing in the school it that is a problem giving given to children as a challenge and then they they solve it together yeah so if there is an issue where uh, for example they are not getting a sufficient uh, play time or their recess time is not sufficient they all get together and solve this problem with the of course facilitation from the teacher and the coordinator yes flexible seating arrangement flexible seating arrangement is also one of the way because if you give the choice to children uh, on seating they want to sit only with one one friend or two friends that they have and every time if you are deciding uh, the, uh, that the, you will sit here or this person will sit there it becomes an authoritative so some days you can have flexible seating arrangement where everyone uh, like you know in the classroom only there are small small circles made yeah you can even move away the furniture and then all the children sit together so for a uh, problem based learning again the steam program by uh, by sar also has these also has this real world problem that children are actually solving it together through steam research and design process right so if you actually see the circle on the right hand side of the slide it starts with problem or the task and then they do the research then they do brainstorm and design and then they make it and then they explain it yes paramjit ma'am my one thing i just want to ask that while teaching drawing subject can we do collaboration like this like i have given them one topic okay dear okay. today you have to draw one rainy season you have to draw one rain scene and mm. they can with their imagination they can draw some of the things uh, any of the kid can come and draw any of the thing relating to rainy season that is it uh, mm. possible while teaching this collaboration yeah, but is if collaboration right every child is drawing on their own no no on the board they have to make on a scenery the on the okay board. so they all come together and create us about whatever you ask okay. them to draw yeah yeah I mean, that is means, yeah that is a collaboration good. whenever children come together to achieve a goal that itself is is a collaboration okay Did I answer your question, Paramjit Ma'am? Okay. Ah, uh, Paramjit Ma'am, did I answer your questions? I think she has. Okay. Yes. Any question till yes, now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I oh, I got my answer. Yes. Okay. Okay. Actually, thank I you. Was, thank um, you. I was muted by the host. Okay. Right. Okay. No problem. Answer. No problem. Yeah. So, any questions still here? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. So, yeah, they have in uh, SAR has a complete STEM program, uh, which completely focuses on project based learning and collaboration. Yes. Oh, I went to the one second. we are here communication that's the fourth and the last 
ती अंडर द इनोवेशन एंड लर्निंग स्किल्स यस सो लेट्स लुक एट हाउ कैन वी प्रमोट कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स इन द क्लासरूम आई एम श्योर आई डोंट हैव टू काइंड ऑफ रिपीट the importance of communication skills we all know that's why uh, if you actually see in the entire flow of the webinar i am not focusing too much on what is communication skill and why it is important but rather i would want to give you uh, activities or strategies that you can go to your class tomorrow and you know implement it yes so the first one under uh, communication skill is storytelling and narrative building so storytelling is of course this is a repetitive but i have to add it wherever it is required because i can't put emphasis enough on how much storytelling is required in 21st century yeah any influencers or any ceos any leaders that you are attracted to okay or you want to listen to them more you want to listen to their podcast or watch video reflect why do you want to listen to them it is because of their storytelling skills it's the way they narrate their story you find it attractive yes so uh, storytelling encourage children to share personal experiences today our world our linkedin our instagram all the social media platforms is all about telling stories telling your personal experiences sharing your personal experiences what i am doing today is sharing my personal experiences as a teacher what has worked in my classroom i am sharing with everyone now this is a skill that we need to uh, build in our children it was very difficult for me to share personal experiences because we were never taught yes so we need to encourage through our storytelling and narrative building uh, to encourage children to share their personal experiences you can also use picture books and you can ask questions to prompt discussions about characters about the characters feelings about the settings about the events where they learn how to narrate and how to build a narrative yes uh you can play a lot of describing guessing and turn taking games what are these games can anyone tell me one describing game which you can play with the children one describing game anyone what do you mean by describing game has anyone put it on the okay. anyone 21 questions okay adjectives it's a game okay mirror effect describe your favorite toy yeah how do i feel today yes these are more of show and tell when i say a uh, uh, game it is like that mystery bag yeah where children feel and then they are describing what what they are feeling yes that's a game feel and guess right even building with blocks so when children are building up uh, blocks and then they are describing what they have built right that's a describing game so uh, you know one thing that we generally miss out is any activity ch that children are involved in in your lesson plan make sure that they are describing it they are describing their activity their feelings their emotions that's how you can also build uh, you know communication skills among children guessing game tell me one guessing game one guessing game jadui pitara i love when someone uses hindi words abra kadabra jadui pitara yes uh, present yourself with an adjective yes that's a game damsharas yes that's a guessing game hangman what's in the box riddle who am i riddles are all guessing games right puzzle quiz guess the sound memory game where we cover the objects we show that tray to the children with the objects then we take it away and children have to memory uh, remember it that's also a guessing game okay turn taking games what are these turn taking games anyone you anyone turn taking turn taking games
Musical chair, dodging tables. Yes. What else? Passing the parcel. They have to wait for their turns. Yes. Relay race, antakshari, uh, ball catching, kicking. Outdoor games, Aruna, ma'am, if you could just be a little more clarify uh, uh, or specific about outdoor games. Sorting the objects if they are waiting. Yeah. If you're giving it to all the children together to sort, mm -mm, it's not a, a turn taking game. Your board games, when you play Monopoly or Thello, all of these are turn taking games. Coco, yes. Right? Pick and speak, yes. Passing the parcel, all of these are turn taking games. Yes. Okay, so those are important for the communication skills. Thank you so much for sharing. I got so many ideas today. Okay, next is using a telephone in dramatic play. I think clearly this is for pre-primary and primary children. Yes, you having a telephone in dramatic play, even our own children when they are like two years and three years old, they start imitating us by talking on the phone, right? Um, so that's how they also build their communication. Creating story baskets. These baskets are nothing but if you're doing a story, all the props related to story are put it in the basket and then children use that to tell a story. Yes, let me give you, show you a picture. I think I had, yeah. So the, on the left-hand side, you see the story basket. Uh, these are not my pictures that are from Creative Kindergarten. Yeah, so these are not my pictures, but I wanted, I need to show you what I mean by story baskets. So this is something that also you can implement. Please do not restrict it to pre-primary, even primary children love to use story baskets. Yes, feelings cornered, having a, a special area in your classroom, a designated space where children can explore, express and discuss their feelings in a safe and supportive environment. They can even do it through speaking. They can even do it through writing, through drawing, whatever works. But just having that space in your classroom where they can actually uh, communicate their feelings to you. Yes, mirror, mirror, copycat. Yeah, you talk and they repeat like Chinese whisper also. Comic strip creation. What children can do is they can create, you know, uh, these uh, comic strips to tell a story. So this actually combines your visual and verbal elements in the storytelling. Right. Next, communication stations. So you can have different stations in your classroom. It could be a writing station, a drawing station, a sto oral storytelling station. Uh, station for and students can be rotated right so some children are comfortable community communicating the story through writing and that should be okay come on some are comfortable with oral so you can first allow them to choose the station they want but we also want them to explore other stations right so then you can put them on rotation Yes, so this is something, this is very similar to learning stations, but here we are only focusing on the stations that can help children communicate to you. Yeah, so it could be writing, it could be drawing, it could be oral storytelling station. So in your oral storytelling uh, station, you can even keep these story baskets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, so we finished the first part of our uh, webinar, which was learning and innovation skills. Second is the life skills. And in that we are focusing on flexibility and adaptability. Then we are focusing on initiative and self-directive, social skills and leadership. Okay, now let's begin with flexibility and adaptability. What do you think? Flexibility and adaptability skills are important. Why do you think? I found the software. Anyone? Can anyone tell me? You can write it. You can even uh, kind of uh, unmute yourself and speak. So they can express themselves. Yes, Paramjit, ma'am. 
ma'am if we are flex we have to be flexible if we want to adapt any of the situation no, then we should be flexible if we will not be flexible then we can do nothing means if we will stick to one thing that no i cannot change then we will not learn anything if i say as a teacher i know everything and uh, there is no use of taking some sort of seminars then it means i am learning nothing i have to start from the zero i must be flexible means whatever you are teaching like uh, firstly as we have learned that analytical sounds a b th th and now through sar education we have learned this jolly phonics that a p k j f means correct i am flexible <laughs> adaptable that's yes. why i learned all right. it and same thing Lovely. we have to teach our kids thank you thank you so much for sharing i think the biggest example i can give you about flexibility and um adaptability is during covid do you all agree that children adapted to online classes much faster than all of us adults yes yeah rupinder i can see the thumbs up yeah yes richard do you want to say something do you want to share thank you manali yeah yes ma'am uh, like uh... as we say that adaptability mm -hmm. in that the students uh, uh, promotes we promotes the problem solving and flexibility and by that the student enable to thrive in the diverse academics and real life world scenario as you told that uh, in a uh, covid time it happened hmm. so it's same right yes so children adapted it so faster you know we took time to learn and unlearn and even for me it was very difficult because i was someone who does not promote a uh, video or learning through videos so it took me a lot of time yes but i was amazed the way children adapted to the whole situation and the way they were enjoying the classes even that time yes so i generally give this as one of the biggest example like during the covid yes so flexibility is nothing but you know yes as all of you said it is adapting to any situation being flexible with others right even in social setup you need to be flexible even if you are a leader you are a ceo i think flexibility and adaptability is one of the most important skills because so much rapidly things are changing you have to adapt we need to adapt to chat gpt nowadays because the high school and college assignments will come through chat gpt now but how do we adapt to it how do we make it a part of our curriculum that's what adaptability is yes so of course lot of open ended activities so we can provide children with lot of activities and mat uh, materials that have multiple uses and usage and possibilities allowing children to explore and create different ways even when you are asking them to make something even for art and uh, art and craft sometimes yes it's important to give uh, you know uh, the materials the fixed materials but it's equally important to just give them and ask them that okay whatever you find in your environment pick it up and create something yes choice time if you follow this choice time half of your behavioral issues also will come down because uh, what do you mean by choice mean uh, choice time it means allocating specific uh, periods where children can choose from a variety of activities or they can choose from the subject that they want to learn encouraging them to uh, make decisions and also adapt to everyone's preferences now why i reconnected with behavior is because um moment the child wakes up in the morning till the time child goes to bed at night the child is only listening to the instructions get up go to school open your book uh, finish eating fast yeah start writing finish writing it's only instructions now as adult just close your eyes for a moment and think that if i get so many instructions am i able to follow it will i like if anyone is giving me so many instructions right so that's why when you give some authority to children their behavioral issues come down why do we make uh, the ch child who is the most talkative why do we make them monitor because 
their behavioral will behavior will automatically change right unexpected changes you have to change your classroom setup quarterly i'm not asking you to buy new furniture but just change the classroom setting change the change the way the tables are kept or change the uh, other furniture like your shelves or cupboards just change the whole thing and see how children are adapting to it you can also introduce occasional changes you know to your daily routine or environment just unexpected because okay every day you start your class with say um um circle time today can you start with dance or a music yeah just as a surprise and you will you are actually helping children to adapt and adjust to the new routine yes mixed stage grouping it really works well um because um, what happens is um the for example a grade 4 child is going and teaching a grade 2 child it's but grade 4 children uh, went and taught to kindergarten children the basic maths addition subtraction all of that and they actually changed the way they communicated they, they their body language changed they adapted first they were all about chalk and talk first class when they went and then they saw that oh these kindergarten children are not paying attention and then what they did was they added lot of objects and they added more activities for children to learn to and to engage and what did grade four children do through the mix age grouping they actually adapted and they were flexible yes flexible seating again i have repeated here because it's all it also comes here loose part play it is nothing but giving these variety of loose parts like your beads and your buttons your shells and children create projects out of it yeah improve games what are improve games you must have heard of improve comedy improve comedy is nothing but on the stage uh, 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 the 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 comedian is given a situation and based on that he has to make other people laugh improv on the spot so the games in which there are instructions and it changes after one every one minute those are improve games for example if you are playing a statue okay and you ask them to uh, become statue then you say okay you froze like a space or you froze like a your like your favorite animal they are improving themselves they are changing and adapting based on your instructions yes transitional challenges are also most of the most of the behavioral issues happen during transition but give them challenge ask them ask them to walk like a robo fly like a bird so they are adapting and they are being flexible to your instructions reflection and goal setting is extremely important uh, to be flexible and adaptable because you know when you integrate reflection regular reflection session where students are discussing their strengths their areas of improvements or they are setting their goals you are encouraging them to adapt to their goals based on the changing circumstances and they are changing adapting themselves so if if you know what is your area of improvement you are working on it right so that's adaptation role model discussions um i think most of the famous personalities right uh, have demonstrated adaptability and resilience and flexibility that's why they are famous so when you are asking children about famous personalities also ask them to analyze and you know the characters uh, that or uh, characters that actually made them be flexible or adaptable also ask them why is this your favorite personality what are the strategies they used to overcome the challenges what were their challenges in their life yes urvi yes urvi you have placed raised hand please unmute yourself ma'am not sure if it was by mistake but i got some break to drink water to sip a water
Urvi ma'am, you want to you want to say something? Okay. No worries. Okay, I will continue. I'm also keeping an eye on the time. Okay. <clears throat> initiative and self directive what are these skills i want to listen from all of you what do you mean by initiative and self directed skills anyone um okay will be no problem i think it was by mistake initiative means try karna yes attempting a uh, leadership uh, shivkami i think we have a separate one so leadership is little different connected but a little different innate in nature willingly participating okay anyone else no one wants to talk to me wants to unmute and talk to me what is initiative and self direction students can tell whatever they know take challenge coming up with their own ideas in different ways to initiate the activity okay and this is nothing but what most of the curriculum boards are saying student autonomy making children responsible for their own learning student agency the ib board says voice choice agency right that is what meaning making children lifelong learner they want to learn that's why they are coming to school creating those skills yeah if ma'am is not able to give me answer they will go somewhere and do their research yes they are directing themselves towards the learning yes so we want basically it is nothing but empowering children's autonomy autonomy is nothing but independence children's curiosity and lifelong learning skills yes so again making children responsible for their own learning student agency so how do we do that okay is this okay i think i missed the slide yeah, yeah. yes playing decision making games i just love playing games so every slide has games what are decision making games can anyone share some names what are decision making games i'm sure i mean i'm sure, so sure everyone has played every at least one taking independent action and making decisions yes any right what are decision making games can you name a few stem role play scrabble okay hide and seek okay looking for ways to accomplish your task tic tac toe is one of the game that all of us have played it's a best decision making game even chess yes it's a decision making game yeah sudoku yeah all your puzzles your musical chair right all of these are decision making games where the where the player decides what is the next step okay divya says no voice no voice is my voice audible hiba yes ma'am perfectly okay okay thank you thank you uh i divya just check from your end because i think everyone is able to hear my voice thank you okay so yes decision making games next time bound task giving them deadlines yes when all of us uh, when when there is a deadline we work better we work faster right this one always respond with a question this idea i have got from my uh, current leader uh, from prarthna world school mrs lakshmi belgere and she shared a wonderful experience with me um she says most of the times when when we ask a question to children or children are asking us the question ma'am is 2 to the 4 is my answer correct what we do is we say yes your answer is correct 
okay but if you really want to create initiative and self directed skills in your children you have to ask them back what do you think do you think your answer is right and the child is actually taking a decision and saying that yes it is right so do let as an adult we we are so it's so engraved in our system to immediately answer our children but instead of that always respond back with the question what do you think yes and the most of the times you have your the answer like when the child is asking the question to uh, to us the child is already having an answer in mind but maybe they don't have the confidence or they are not so sure so when you respond back with the question you are also uh, giving them confidence yes scheduling some independent work time in your class and along with the work time it is also independent learning and reading time where children choose the book they want to read where children choose how they want to learn so when you are actually creating learning stations you are giving them independent learning time because they are choosing how they want to learn through a art station through a games station through manipulative station right when you say independent work time there should be at least for primary and middle school they should have scheduled time where they are uh, researching on on a topic on their own you give them the resources but they are doing the research yes having genius hour once a month genius genius hour is an approach to actually uh, to learning it's a it's a type of learning where students are guided by their own interest by the background by their own knowledge and by the curiosity to learn so it is actually based on on google's um, a rule where employees are able to spend up to 20% of their time working on the projects that they are interested in and they are passionate about yes when children get to learn on the topic that is more favorite to them the learning is much higher so you can have this genius hour concept in your school involving children in your into the decision making one we've already spoken about norms about agreements what else can we involve children in even creating the notice board you can involve children's uh decision in that what children want to read on the notice board what children want to see on the notice board so even when you are changing the setup like i mentioned in the previous slide change your setup um, every quarterly why don't we involve children in those decisions right and the last is the stem challenge and for this i would like to share a video to help you understand what is the stem challenge i am talking about okay just give me a moment help today's students become tomorrow's innovators with easy people is the voice audible yes ma'am okay thank you prep stem Help today's students become tomorrow's innovators with easy prep STEM lessons and challenges. The 15 STEM challenges provide you low prep lessons that guide students through the entire STEM process, including redesign. Every unit provides a suggested materials list to create the STEM challenge. A science text to build background. Real world examples. a hands-on stem challenge a design process worksheet helps guide students through the engineering process of plan create test and evaluate students work together to complete the stem challenge after students build their design they test evaluate and refine their design as needed stem lessons and challenges nurtures design thinking and a growth mindset STEM lessons and challenges supports current science and math standards and is available for grades 1 through 6. Check it out today. Okay, what is one thing that you noticed in this video?
What is one thing that you noticed in this video? Ask themselves to do, do research, learning by doing themselves. It is student led. Yes, if there was no mention of teacher in the entire video. It was everything by students, for students, right? Student orientation, child driven, facilitating kids. Yes, everything about student. Yes. So I just wanted to give, give an idea about what the STEM challenge is and how you can implement it in your classroom. Yes, just to give you a brief of that. Okay, so here we are all done with the strategies to develop initiative and self-directed skills. So next we move on to social, social and cross-cultural skills. Just one second. Okay. So we all know the importance of it, uh, why social skills are important. I think COVID taught us the importance of social skills in a big way where all of us were really dying to socialize, to meet people, right? So why does this slide come every time? Okay, so what are some of the strategies that you can do? One is, of course, have role play social situations. Yes, so we can, you can have a home set up or give them a situation where children are doing the role play. Global music and dance. I think this is very important. And don't restrict it to only when you are doing countries of the world or you are doing states of, the, of India. Don't restrict it to that. Use it even for your annual days or just for children to listen to the global music and dance. Just, just listen and to enjoy it, right? Pen pals, extremely important. I think every primary classroom and a middle school and a high school classroom should have collaboration with schools across the world and have children develop pen pals. Because when they understand the culture of other people, they become more tolerant. I think most of the issues that India is facing is because our tolerance levels are too low. We get very agitated if, if someone kind of is, is following a culture that is opposite to our culture. We all get very agitated, right? So pen pals are extremely important for children to be accepted, to be accepted towards the other culture, right? Class stories. If children have gone for a vacation, ask them to share where they have gone, whom did they meet, what is the local food they ate, what were the different things that they observed. Class stories, ask them to share. Class meeting also becomes very important when they also talk about their families, right? Again, every family in India has a very different culture, right? We don't sometimes have to go to know the culture of other countries. India itself is has so many cultures, but discuss, discussing that during the class meeting, right? Mapping connections. So you can display a world map and show children where different countries are located, right? And you can use stickers or pins to mark the places where children's families are also coming from or they have visited. So this you can even do for the India map. Right, you can do it for the children for for world map also if they have any relatives in abroad or if they have visited this place. So you can use it in different uh, different topic. Right, mapping connections, restorative practices. Has anyone heard of restorative practices? Would you like to tell me or write it? What do you mean by restorative practices? Anyone? You all are doing it in some way or the other in your classroom or in your real life. It is nothing but the practices that help you express your feelings, discuss the impact of the actions and also work towards finding a solution. That is what restorative practices is. Okay, you can even have, for example, you can have an art mural. So you can have children collaborating together to create a uh, mural kind of a thing or a collage 
that actually reflects the value of your values of your classroom yeah paramjit ma'am uh, restorative practice is nothing but practices or activities that help you express your feelings discuss the impact of actions and also work towards one solution that is restorative practices okay you can also have reflecting journals for children yes because journal is a even in our uh, in the school that i am in we do not have student diary but we have something called student journal where children are going to reflect every day weekly monthly and yearly those are restorative practices even doing those gratitude circles is a restorative practice yes when you do i think riya had mentioned feelings check in on the feelings those are all restorative practices okay next so the last is leadership and responsibility skills and i can't uh, emphasize enough on why do we need leadership skills okay please read the book by robin sharma uh it's it's on a leader uh, no title uh, leader needs no title something like this is an amazing book which says that every individual on this earth is a leader in some or the other way it's just that we are not aware of it yes so right now before i share my strategies i want to know how do you promote leadership in your classroom yes how do you promote leadership and responsibility skills in your classroom yes uh, mutasir please allow me class monitoring shifting okay uh mudasir wants to unmute uh hipa can you help ha giving duties giving small jobs okay ask students to do small task okay peer teaching yes peer teaching is so important like i gave you the example of grade 4 going and teaching kindergarten children leadership right good evening okay self and peer Yes, yes, sir. Uh, actually, I'm Mudasir uh, from Assam, Welkin. Uh, Hi, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, we can give uh, different, you know, that platforms wherein we can develop the leadership qualities among the students. Like uh, in school, we are having the different activities uh, pertaining to our, uh, you know, that like uh, co-curricular activities, wherein uh, we can provide the opportunities to the students so that uh, let's see how they are going to manage the, you know, that the program or the event. so uh, so okay. in this we can we can uh, check that uh, like the person what kind of the quality they have uh, whether they are cooperating whether they are dealing they are having the managing skills and all that thing so this will give, uh, definitely give us the you know that the uh, like idea that what kind of the leadership quality a particular student is having right lovely thank you so much for sharing uh, yes pile it is i think leader without title yes that is the book okay it is an amazing book which you all can read being responsible to words oneself taking class a day through through presentation okay lovely yes as simple as what anamika is suggesting making children put their water bottle and backpack on their own and not aunties doing it fantastic even when they have finished eating their box or if they are serving food in the school yeah just separating the dry the kitchen waste and then rinsing their tiffin box or their plate it is as simple as that it starts from there right so lovely discussion uh, let's now look at the slide that has been always popping up opportunities of decision making i think i have already shared some of the ideas but i had to add it here right showcasing both famous figures and their strength when you are talking about the leaders around the world discuss their strengths discuss their challenges right give children the opportunity to take leadership roles in the classroom i think most of you are doing this beautifully having the line leader the book leader 
the activity leader yeah you can give them these roles these are the smaller ways uh, to inculcate children the leadership skills yeah i think the most important thing that we need to do is promote active listening because this is one of the most important skill that every leader should possess do you agree that every leader should have active listening skills or they should be able to listen to the people actively how can we do that yes a simple activity if you want to show them um, some share some information through a video and if you think that we first what you can actually do is turn off the screen let them just listen to the audio you are actually promoting active listening because children will actively listen to the information that is being shared in the audio use podcast in your classrooms there are fantastic podcasts on different topics and there are some child um, some podcast specifically for children yes so you can use podcast in your in your lesson plan yes encouraging perseverance what is perseverance how do you encourage that perseverance means not giving up i don't want to give up children will not be able to do the worksheet finds it difficult to do the worksheet but encouraging them to not give up you are indirectly what you're doing is encouraging the present Uh, perseverance in children show and tell with a twist what you can do instead of doing a traditional show and tell you can actually do show and teach right where children are showing something and also teaching their classmates yes these are some of the ways but i think most important to uh, leadership leadership skills that we need to promote is the active listening and perseverance one more point i want to add here in terms of perseverance any child if you if they have done any worksheet or you know if you if you're grading their uh, their paper if the child has made a, a very silly mistake the parents and teachers generally make the statement or oh, the child has lost uh, she's got less marks because she's made some silly mistakes now when you say that you are indirectly giving a message to the child that it is not okay to make mistakes yes you are not encouraging perseverance because child will give up so you for 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 you it must be a silly mistake but maybe child would not be aware of it or awareness wouldn't be there or the child is focusing somewhere else or is in daydreaming it could be anything but avoid using these statements okay so yes this is this is what a complete uh, life skill uh, program is all about by sar and they have amazing progression grade wise progression for these life skills and what they do is they develop self awareness self management responsible and decision making relationship skills and social awareness it's an amazing progr- program now you must be wondering ma'am you've given so many strategies how do i implement that in my classroom right so many strategies i don't have time also i have to finish my portion so what i generally do is i tell teachers that make a checklist okay um uh, if any you are doing any activity write the 21st century skill that you think is promo- you are promoting and then you have to check that in a week am i uh, ticking off all the 21st century skills or not and as i told you at the beginning most of it now you we've come to the end of the presentation and i'm sure you understand that you have been doing most of it maybe a little more change a little more add on to what you are doing will really promote 21st century skills in children so when you are doing any activity any strategy just write the 21st century skill that you are implementing and make sure that all that we have discussed today is there at least once in two weeks okay so
that's my number that's my email id that's my social media pages you can follow me reach out to me if you have any comments questions right and before we end the presentation i will be sharing a mentimeter just one second uh, yes one second link with you i request all of you to click on the link and there's a question that all of you have to answer and it would be nice if you could uh, answer that question i am going to display those answers here so which is one strategy that you will be implementing in your classroom from next week and i am waiting for the responses from all of you and let me see the responses here think parent share flexibility thank you that is fantastic ma'am can you choose from flexibility one strategy show and tell with the twist lovely perseverance fantastic what oh, this is amazing genius time oh, i love the genius hour class story student responsibility divergent thinking mm -hmm. fantastic show and teach starting the morning activity with the dance or energy energetic activity fantastic i'm just loving this lovely reflexing journal reflecting journal yes very important communication station yeah that's my favorite lovely peer teaching lovely active learning i will start implementing one second i'm not able to see to minimize prayers okay start the class with the start of feelings corner of fantastic you will see changes you will see magic in your classroom if you start doing that improve game strategy lovely so glad lovely 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 yes 10 pals please do that children will benefit so much they'll be ready to in future if they want to relocate to uh, you are building up a very beautiful skill in them through pen pals peer pals whatever you call them. lovely thank you so much so i'll stop sharing and i think over to you kiba thank you so much ma'am for sharing such an engaging this is such an engaging and very um, like um, we have got so many ideas how to implement 21st century skills in the classroom thank you so lovely. much and i request all the participants please give your emotions please react uh, through the emotion show your love to miss um grish ah, because i think oh thank you dolly uh um, let's give it's some so reactions it's important to connect anything and everything you do with emotions it's so important yes. it's such an important uh, thing that you have to add it in your lesson plans also feelings and emotions thank you oh thank you so much I'm so touched i'm so touched <laughs> thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you. I tried. This is a little dry. Thank you so topic. much. We are honored. <laughs> and can we move forward for our question and answer session? If there are yes. any queries from our part participants. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I request. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh -huh. so I request you all if you have any queries regarding to today's webinar. If you have any questions, you please write in the chat box or raise your hand. We will. Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask directly yeah someone was asking the contact slide you can take a screenshot of his of this yes sushma devi has sushma, raised hand um, please unmute yourself ma'am Nishita, ma'am. I think um, you want you want to ask something, ma'am. Sushma, ma'am. 
you can unmute yourself Sanchita, ma'am, uh, any strategy to involve non-participative child in uh, collaborative tasks? Ma'am, uh, one thing that I will be very, very honest is uh, you cannot force any child to participate in, in, in any task, right? Force does not work with children, yes? What you can do is you can, uh, if the child is being non-participative, you can try to check with the parent um any any leads as to what is the favorite toy or favorite food or you know favorite activity for the child what the child does at home maybe you can connect your collaborative task with that but trust me like i cannot we cannot force any child to be a part of collaborative task yes yeah and how to involve children with different needs Mm. That is that requires a different uh, webinar altogether. But what I would, in brief, suggest is first identify the needs. Right. Yeah. Once you identify it, then you your instruction, your activity has to be uh, maybe three level. Yeah. So if you have children, uh, I'm sure in every classroom there is there are group of children who are above average, not in terms of intelligence, but either they already know the activity or something. Then you can have the difficult activity for them. You can have the least difficulty for children who are trying to cope up with the topic that you are teaching. Yes. So that's how you can uh, identify the need and then differentiate your instruction and activities for them. Yes. yes, how to I involve. Have... Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes. Someone is asking how to involve, uh, evolve or involve high need students. I think it's the same. Like if the child, uh, you feel that the child has knows everything and child is getting bored, you need to challenge um, and have difficult activities for them for the same topic. Yeah. What all digital tools you can use in teaching learning process? There are many. SAR also has some amazing digital tools, so you can check with them, get in uh, get in touch with them. Mm. Please share my number. How can and I how help my school? Slow writer. Yes, yeah, slow, writers. slow writers. Yeah. Yeah. So slow writers again, we need to understand why they are writing slow. There are three, four reasons. One, maybe their fingers are not developed. Second, some negative uh, event has happened. Where now the child does not want to write. Or the child, uh, sometimes what happens is in the classroom, other children finish the writing first, yeah. fast, and they, they submit it to the teacher. So the child who is a slow writer, their confidence is constantly going down that I cannot write, I cannot write, and they finally give up. So try and understand. Uh, so at any age, you cannot force child for any activity, any collaborative task or, or writing or reading. There is some reason behind it. We have to only understand that reason. Uh, Mirasha, I don't have any WhatsApp group right now, but you can get in touch with me through different social media platforms. Thank you so much, Annie. Simon, thank you for this feedback. What strategy should we use for a slow learner? Mm -hmm. Understand. Why slow learner? Why is the child not able to understand the information? There could also be a hearing problem or a vision problem. Or the child does not understand the language of the teacher. It could be that. Right. Maybe the child is not able to process the information or retain the information. When you say slow learner, there are different types of slow learners. Some children cannot, they understand the topic, but they're not able to retain the information in their mind. Yeah. And then when you give a test, they're not able to answer it. So then we call them as slow learner. Right. But uh, we need to get them checked. Uh, get, get uh, are they actually get their test done and let them understand and diagnose if the child is actually a slow learner or there is something else yeah i think hiba we have answered most of the questions yes ma'am yes ma'am and we are running out of time and i have shared yes. the 
Ah uh, yes, I have shared the attendance list in the chat box. So it's a request. So please, please, please fill the form and give your response and feedback in the form. And I want to thank you so very much, ma'am, for such an informative session from the team, sir. And we value your time and we hope you enjoyed yourself as much we did. Yes, you can see the smile on my face. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So all the participants, thank you so much for joining and I request you to so stay tuned for more upcoming webinars and events. We are committed to bringing you knowledge and insight that can make a difference in your personal and professional lives. Wish you a great day and may the information you have gained today contribute to your growth and success. Have a nice day, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good day. Everyone rest well and all the best in your future endeavors. Bye. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.